See Blake, are we ready to start? Give me like 30 more seconds here. Hope you will fill in. All right, Brian, you're good. Okay, well, thank you everyone uh, for joining us. This is our State of the Transportation Virtual Luncheon presented by Houston Airport System. My name is Brian Ruth. I'm the Senior Director of Land Development for McCord Development and Generation Park. I also serve as the Chair for the Transportation Committee for Partnership Lake Houston. Thank you for joining us today. We have a great program that includes the Houston Airport Systems projects, metro updates, uh, current roadway projects in the Lake Houston area, and the expanding trail systems. Before we get to our speakers, I want to recognize our sponsor of today's luncheon. We should be having our presenting sponsors, Houston Airport si System, uh, Rhonda Arnold, the Chief Community Relations Officer of Houston Airport Systems will say a couple words. Good morning. I'm Rhonda Arnold, the Chief Community uh, and Business Relations Officer for the Houston Airport System and a proud advisory board member of this wonderful partnership Lake Houston. It is an honor to be uh, the presenting sponsor today and we look forward to having an exciting time uh, with you this, this afternoon. The Houston Airport is pleased to have this business relationship and that has lasted for decades. I started back when we were the Envil Chamber of Commerce and the relationships that we've built through the years has been fantastic. So we look forward to sharing some wonderful um, uh, new upcoming ideas and new coming opportunities with you today. And we are glad to be the sponsoring uh, presenter today. Enjoy. Sorry about that, I was muted. Uh, thank you, Rhonda. We'd also let, like to recognize our new members for the month of September. At the market level, we have at-home dialysis. And at the business level, we have Don Mays Insurance Agency, Nash Industries, and Physio, Physical Therapy, and Atascacita. Uh, we will be taking questions at the end of this presentation from the audience today. So please type your questions in the questions and answer section. And as I stated, we will uh, try to get to those at the end if there's time, which there should be. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker for today's discussion. Uh, we are pleased to be joined by Devin Tyner, the Assistant Director of Building Standards for Houston Airport System. In his current role, he leads the Tenant Improvement Program and Construction Project Inspections of Capital Projects throughout the Houston Airport System. Additionally, Devin serves as the Chief Engineer for Houston Airports. Devin, we are eager to hear about the current and upcoming airport projects, which there appear to be a lot after having been out there <laughs> a couple of times recently. So thank you for joining us. Thank you and good afternoon. You hear me okay? Great. Yeah. Um, so thanks for the opportunity to represent the Houston airports and, and discuss transportation developments 
Uh, I want to spe especially thank Katina Carvajalez and Blake Kelly for coordinating the session and letting me know what to expect. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce you to the Houston Airport System. You know, we are an enterprise uh, fund department of the city of Houston, which means that we're financially self-sustaining. And the airport system includes George Bush Intercontinental, William P. Hobby, and Ellington Airports, as well as the Houston Spaceport. You know, we had a, we had a total of 24.7 million passengers in 2020, which is down a bunch from the 15 million we had pre-COVID in 2019. Uh, and we drive about 36 billion in economic activity annually. Air travel restoration is a big focus for us. We are seeing continuous growth since we were down to our lowest point in April 2020 when passenger traffic was down 95%. But 15 months later in August 2021, we are only down 15% and we project reaching pre-pandemic travel numbers again by 2023 or early 2024. And we've been preparing for that upswing in passenger traffic by continuing progress on our infrastructure programs to help us meet our vision, which is to establish the Houston Airport system as a five-star global air service gateway with the magic of flight is celebrated. We were, real, we were realizing that vision in 2021 with uh, the recognition we received at the Skytrax World Airports Awards, where Bush Airport was named the best U.S. airport for the second year in a row. Other honors included cleanest U.S. airport and COVID-19 uh, excellence awards. Also, the TSA named Bush the Airport of the Year for the second year in a row. And finally, Hobby was named Most Improved U.S. Airport by Skytrax. So focusing on Bush Airport, the major transportation infrastructure programs include the Intercontinental Terminal Redevelopment Program, known as ITRIP, the Domestic Redevelopment Program, known as DRP or DRIP, and the Skyway Train Replacement. ITRIP is a $1.3 billion international terminal program that includes construction of a new wide body, aircraft concourse known as the new D West Pier, renovation of the Terminal D concourse, a new Mickey Leland International Arrivals and Departures Hall, and a new Federal Inspection Services area. Currently, the new concourse foundation is being constructed in the vicinity of the old Sea North Terminal, and the DE garage is being deconstructed to make way for the International Processor buildings. All should be delivered in phases through FY24. On the other side is the Domestic re Redevelopment Program, which has a similar girth to the ITRIP and includes modernization of Terminal A, which is now 50 years old. This is a modernization of utilities, finishes, architecture, and includes new restroom facilities. It also includes expansion of airline gates to meet growing passenger demand from new tenants like Southwest Airlines. A much needed component of the program is improvement to the Terminal A curbside traffic lanes to increase departing arrival uh, passenger flows. Also, the Terminal A baggage handling system modifications are underway now. Bush Airport is also moving forward with the replacement of the Skyway train system, which is approaching 25 years old now. This will replace the current Bombardier train system with a modern system. It includes a new train operation center and control system and upgrades to the platforms, stations, and structural systems. Look for the RFP to advertise tomorrow. So down in Ellington, the Houston Spaceport is literally, literally shooting for the moon. One of the first spaceport tenants, Intuitive Machines, is building the next lunar lander for NASA there. And tenant construction is going full force with intuitive machines breaking ground soon on their new headquarters there. Axiom Space is also building headquarters and aerospace manufacturing facilities on a 22 acre campus from which they will build the world's first commercial space station. Collins Aerospace is building a 120,000 square foot facility there. And future developments include the Edge Center, which is a collaborative education center to provide workforce training for this aerospace industry. Partners in the Edge Center include Rice University, Texas A&M, Texas Southern University, San Jacinto College, and the University of Houston Clear Lake. We are now planning and programming for the phase two infrastructure program to expand the spaceport footprint and provide better access via an entrance road connection to Highway 3 and intersection improvements on Space Center Boulevard. Lastly, we're prepared to advertise in December for a design build contractor to deliver a new full length taxiway known as Taxiway Lima to connect the spaceport tenants to runway 422 to facilitate aerospace manufacturing logistics and to runway 35L to support space missions. Now, that's not all we're doing at Houston Airports, but it covers the major investments. So I hand the controls back over to the facilitator and look forward to the forum. Thanks for your time. Great, thank you, Devin. Uh, our next speaker is Arturo Jackson, and he will be providing an update on Metro and the Lake Houston area. Arturo serves as Vice President of Special, Specialized Transit Services, managing contracted, 
paratransit and microtransit services in the Metropolitan Transit Authority of Harris County or Metro. Arturo, thank you for joining us and we are excited to hear about what is new with Metro in the Lake Houston area. Good, good afternoon, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can. So, sounds great, thank, thank you so much uh, to our friends at uh, Lake Houston Chamber for the opportunity uh, to be here. Uh, again, my name is Arturo Jackson. Uh, I serve as one of the vice presidents within the operations department. Uh, at Houston Metro, we are uh, definitely excited about continue, continuing to be the region's uh, transportation uh, provider. And uh, with, with, with that said, we're also excited about being here the day after the, uh, the Astros went, won a really big game. Very exciting. I'm sure uh, you guys will have a lot of questions about that victory last night. So uh, at Houston Metro, obviously uh, we recognize that we're still in the middle of a uh, pandemic and uh, our number one focus is on continuing to provide transportation services to the region in a safe and reliable manner, focusing on the uh, safety and well-being of our customers and our employees and the, uh, the, the community. Uh, second of all, we recognize that we have a responsibility not only to our customers uh, who ride the service, but we also have a responsibility to the uh, taxpayers of the uh, of the region. And with this, with that said, uh, recently we've received the, uh, the the highest rankings ratings uh, or extremely high ratings from uh, two major uh, credit reporting agencies, uh, 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 Standard and Poor's and the other, um, well, I had a note here, the, the other was the, uh, no, uh, the, the Kroll Bond Rating Agency Group. And so we're excited about that, that we're uh, being responsible both to our customers that ride the service and the taxpayers of the, uh, of the region. Today, we're gonna talk about uh, Metro's plans to expand our uh, service area, our paratransit service area uh, Metrolift is a service that Houston Metro provides to riders with disabilities, people who are unable to utilize uh, Metro's uh, local bus service. Uh, here you can see uh, is a picture of the Metrolift service area, which spans approximately uh, 772 square miles across, uh, across the region. Uh, the area in green represents where our local fixed route bus services go, and uh, we're required under the Americans with Disabilities Act to serve those areas. Uh, at Houston Metro, uh, our commitment to serving seniors and riders with disabilities predates the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, which was signed into law in 1990. Well, in 1979, uh, Houston Metro began providing this service, uh, Metrolift, uh, and we're excited again about expanding that area into uh, to, to the northeast area into uh, Umbo and, and Kingwood. Again, the uh, area in the green is what is required under the ADA. The yellow area and the, the, the tan and the blue area represents areas that we go that exceed the uh, requirements under the ADA. And so in 1999, we started to go out into areas beyond just what was required. And today we're gonna to be talking about how we're not only going uh, uh, beyond that, now we're going to be expanding even, even more. And so here we'll be, uh, and we plan this for later in the, uh, in the early part of uh, 2022, where we're going to expand our services into the uh, Humble area. Uh, again, this is services for uh, seniors and people with disabilities. They will be able to travel uh, from Humble to, uh, to the uh, Harris County, Houston area, uh, and also in between uh, within Humble. We're also currently providing services in Kingwood 
and uh, only within Kingwood for those people that uh, currently utilize the service in Kingwood, they have to transfer one of our transit centers and we bring them into the uh, Houston Harris County area. Now we're going to open it up where those riders will be able to uh, travel directly on Metrolift services from Kingwood over to Humble into Houston Harris County. We think it's going to be a great opportunity again to uh, to serve many riders who've been asking for the uh, asking for the service and we're excited about the opportunity to provide these transportation services. Uh, Houston Metro left pre-pandemic uh, was providing over two million passenger trips a year. Uh, we're one of the largest paratransit services in the, in the nation and we're uh, we are the largest in the uh, the state of Texas. Uh, now, the vehicles uh, is the type of vehicles we use are is very important to us. We recognize that uh, that the, the the community is very interested in what type of vehicles would be going up and down the streets, and businesses are excited about uh, the type of vehicles that we're going to be utilizing. On the left, we have wheelchair accessible uh, vans that can accommodate up to four people in in wheelchairs and. Uh, along with a combination of people who are ambulatory uh, to, to utilize the service. On the bottom right, we have minivans that we'll be utilizing also. Uh, you can see that they're very uh, nice and clean and uh, we take COVID-19 uh, precautions each and every day. They're clean, they're clean throughout the day. Uh, drivers are require, required to, to wear a mask along with uh, customers. So we are very excited about the opportunity to provide this service and uh, to continue our great partnership uh, with the folks in the uh, Lake Houston uh, Chamber and in these uh, different uh, cities and areas. So with that said, we'll turn it back over to, the, uh, to our moderator. And if there are any questions, we'll be happy to answer those at the, uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. Great, thank you, Arturo. Uh, I will now be covering the current roadway project in the Lake Houston area and the top five long-term roadway projects as determined by the Transportation Committee. Um, I'm gonna be presenting these projects through aerial mapping from a GIS system that we are currently setting up to monitor projects in the area. Our goal is to have the GIS fully set up by the end of the year, which will help us more easily track historical projects, current projects, and aid us in evaluating uh, future area needs. Prior to jumping into the projects, I'm gonna share a map of the jurisdictional entities in the Lake Houston area as they exist today. And Nope, 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 that's the wrong one. Sorry, I think I shared the wrong screen here. Um, my apologies, everyone. <laughs> I am having an issue here. My sh okay. We see your screen. I, can you see it? Okay, you can see the jurisdiction screen. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the confusion, it wasn't uh, highlighted. So uh, we put this map together just to show everyone in the Lake Houston area, uh, the different jurisdictions that we have to coordinate with on transportation projects and that we are very thankful to for building, constructing those projects. So 
Up to the north here, you see Montgomery County, Precinct 3 that comes down toward Humble, Precinct 4 just to the north of Kingwood. Harris County, uh, Precinct 4 comes into Kingwood and south through Humble and all the way south of the Beltway. Uh, Precinct 4 in Harris County comes in uh, to the Tascacita area and then to the south of the Lake Houston area is Precinct 1 which is Commissioner Ellis's area. In addition, um, the city of Houston, it um, comes up Lake Houston into Kingwood and uh, around the airport. That is all within their boundaries. And then Humble here is shaded in tan. So it gives you an idea of the different jurisdictions that we work with. And as we go into the projects, we'll talk about who's doing what in our area. So we're gonna work from north to south on the projects within our area. There's quite a bit going on. Um, so I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail. Uh, our first project is sorters widening to four lanes. This project is from Highway 1314 to North Park Drive. This is a Montgomery County Precinct 4 project that is currently bidding, so hopefully we'll see work starting on this soon. As we move to the south, uh, North Park is, uh, there's a North Park widening project, excuse me, to six lanes from I-69 to Russell Palmer. Uh, this is being conducted by the Lake Houston TERS, and that has a first quarter 2022 start. Uh, one thing I want to note about this project is it will create a bridge over the UPRR and will be the first connection into Kingwood um, that will provide that grade separated connection so folks don't have to wait for trains. As we move farther south along Loop 494 near the Kingwood Drive, um, the, there's an expansion underway there for four lanes. This is a tech stop project and it has had some minor delays because of uh, weather, et cetera, but it is looking, they're looking at a second quarter 2022 completion. Uh, down at the next project is down at Hamblin Road. This is a realignment study, which will also include a railroad grade separation over the Union Pacific Railroad and could potentially create a second access point into the Kingwood area uh, without having to cross the tracks. This is a Harris County Precinct 4 project and they're looking at a third quarter 2022 completion. As we move to the east, there's multiple concrete panel replacements occurring in Kingwood, uh, along Kingwood Drive, Westlake Houston Parkway and Willow Terrace. So we'd like to thank the city of Houston for those improvements. They were greatly needed and those are near completion. Moving south of Kingwood over the San Jacinto, we come to our largest project in the area, which is the FM 1960 widening to six lanes. That starts on the west at uh, 1960 Business and ends on the east at Lake Houston Bridge. This is a tech stop project and they are on schedule for a fourth quarter 2023 completion. I'm sure many of you have been up and down 1960 and seen everything that's going on there. As we move to the west, TxDOT is also conducting, or has completed, excuse me, a study of 1960 access management study. This went from I-45 to I-69. Um, that study has com been completed and is available on their website. It lays out a zero to five year program, five to 10 year program, and uh, will improve traffic flow along the 1960 corridor. Moving south into the Humble area, uh, Rankin Road is being widened from the railroad to Umble, Old Humble Road. 
This is a city of humble project and they're looking at a fourth quarter 2021 completion. So we'll transition to the east. This is over within the precinct two area. Uh, Timber Forest Drive, the re that reconstruction from Eagle Springs to Eagle Springs Parkway, excuse me, to Madera Run, that is complete. Uh, additionally, the Madera Run Parkway expansion from Kings Parkway to Boundary Waters Lane, also a precinct two project, is also complete. And those are great, great roads to ride on if you get a chance. They're looking good. Uh, Timber Forest will be extended to the south over the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, this project is underway and is expected to reach completion in fourth quarter 2021. This is a Harris County Precinct 1 and 2 project uh, and will create another grade separated crossing in addition to Westlake Houston Parkway to the east. As we shift farther south below Beltway 8, We have the Mesa Drive expansion study in the Fall Creek area. This is from drainage channel P133 to Monarch Lane. This is a Harris County Precinct 4 project and has a uh, fourth quarter 2021 completion date. Lockwood Road uh, widening south of the Beltway. It has already been widened uh, south of the railroad tracks, but this is from the Beltway to just to the south side of the railroad tracks. That project has been designed, um, but at this point, we're actually reevaluating that project and whether or not a bridge could be installed. We think it makes more sense to install a bridge similar to what's Timber Forest. Uh, because of the future traffic volumes in this area. So that is that feasibility study is underway and should be completed within the next couple of weeks to determine the direction of that project. Uh, Westlake Houston Parkway, four lanes have are now open from Lockwood Drive down to North Lake Houston Parkway. That's within the Generation Park project and that project was completed by the Generation Park Management District. So those are that summarizes the, the current and recently completed projects within the Lake Houston area. I'm now going to jump to the uh, top five projects as determined by the Transportation Committee. Uh, these, are, these are roadway projects that we're looking to implement long-term. Um, and these are not ranked by priority, they're just the top five. So, uh, the first one is Sorters McClellan widening. We talked about the Sorters widening down to North Park Drive previously. This would be a widening from North Park all the way down to 69. There currently is widening occurring uh, adjacent to the, the New Canny development, uh, excuse me, the New Canny High School. Um, and you can see that construction is underway now. We mentioned previously one of one of the goals for the transportation committee was to get this Hamblin Road realignment done. That study is underway. We would also like to see the Hamblin Road realignment, uh, or excuse me, the Hamblin Road extension to Woodland Hills Drive. Which brings us to our third project. Uh, this is a Woodland Hills Drive four lane extension. This would take Woodland Hills from Kingwood Drive all the way to the south across the San Jacinto River, down across 1960 and to the Atascacita Road as a four lane road. A portion of that stretch, uh, both between 1960 and Atascacita Road, as well as the portions north of the San Jacinto River exists today as a two lane road. Moving to the west into the Umble area, uh, we did talk as a transportation committee about a connection between 
Deerbrook Mall and Townsend Boulevard, especially because of the traffic that occurs around the mall, uh, seasonally in particular. At, we are continuing to review that option. I, to date, we haven't been able to find a solution that wouldn't greatly impact that neighborhood. Uh, so this, this may drop off our top priority list and be replaced at some point down the road. Our final top five is the FM 1960 direct connects to I-69. Whether headed northbound onto 19, northbound on 59 and trying to get off onto 1960 or whether you're on 1960 and headed south on 59, in both cases, you have to deal with the signal at FM 1960 business in this location. So the idea would be to come see if we could develop a solution with TxDOT or others that would avoid those intersections, which create the, the large backups in the area. Okay, so that, that ends our uh, projects in the area as well as the top five transportation priorities. I'm going to stop the share here. Okay, next I'm gonna introduce our final speaker who is Gonzalo Echeverria. Uh, he's the Director of Planning and Design at McCord Development and Generation Park, and he's a great coworker friend of mine. His work and studies have been centered on architecture, urban design, regional planning, and research over the past 25 years. He will be discussing the trail systems in the Lake Houston area. Gonzalo, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, I hope you can all hear me well. Um, I am going to share my screen. I think I'm doing it right now. So um, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Gonzalo Echeverria. I'm uh, the director for design and planning for McCord Development. Uh, concentration now on what we're doing here in Generation Park. And so we're super excited about um, this opportunity, you know, to share what we've been working on. Like what, what we're gonna be sharing with you is, you know, what's on the boards, uh, hasn't been like really published. It's, uh, you know, it's work in progress. Um, but we would love, you know, to get some feedback in, from you, like could be off, you know, offline, like later, you know, via email, etc. But you know, we'd love to share a little bit, you know, where we are today with this study. So, um, one important thing, you know, for for us uh, to understand. Let me see if how do I share this here? Okay, is that um, you know we are in uh, in this great area of the metropolitan area of Houston. We are like in this northeast section of the city, which has been developing, you know, over time, but as, you know, parts and pieces. So we have an opportunity here of, uh, you know, to bring it all together. And uh, that's how we're thinking, you know, from Generation Park, thinking this area as, uh, you know, Lake Houston area, you know, one community. It, trying to make sure that the community understands, you know, all the assets that it has, and also uh, that the community, the people that live, work, um, or come here for entertainment, you know, have could have a mental map of what this region is about. Right now, there's a little bit of a lot of uh, pieces that are like coming together, but most of the people probably don't have a clear picture of what this region is about and what are the main elements that compose this, um, this region. So uh, for that, um, we went and study uh, and we've been compiling information about land use. And uh, so what you see here is, you know, from Kingwood to the north, uh, we see Amble, you know, to the left, uh, we see Atascosita, and then we're coming down to Fall Creek, Summerwood, and then our area here at Generation Park, plus the communities south of us. 
And so for us, it's important to understand what is happening with the land use in this area. Where is the employment? Where, is, where, are, the, uh, where are the commercial areas? So th those are like the ones in red. Where are the residential areas? And you know, very important too is like, where are the parks? And uh, so when you have that in mind, you, you can create like um, a little bit of, um, sorry, this is not really working. I think I need to click. So you have in mind a, a little bit of uh, what's uh, going on in the area. And I'm doing like this, you know, uh, I'm doing this to show you where we are. What we see is that we have a huge potential to connect to many things. Uh, a, a big amount of parks and open spaces, some private, some public, good institutions that we have that could be totally incorporated into the, 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 the open space system somehow. And also we have, uh, you know, the Lake Houston, San Jacinto River, uh, here to the north, we have the opportunity to connect to Spring, Lakes, uh, Spring Creek, which will connect us all the way to that northern part of the city, which is, uh, is very nice and beautiful. And, uh, and actually that trail is pretty amazing too. And, uh, and uh, the other thing is that we have, you know, like great, as I said, great lakes, uh, rivers and some great canals that they go through and cross our communities with an, a very big opportunity for us to uh, use them as good connectors. Uh, also, what we are uh, looking at is the location of schools where our kids go to and, um, and um, in a way to, to understand uh, how uh, people will use um, these connectors that we're creating that, you know, we're going to be focusing on trail, but we're calling, you know, the micro mobility. This is it's all a, it's everything that is not car uh, or, or public, you know, big tra public transportation. This is all like walking, biking, uh, hiking, uh, e-bikes, scooters, and so many other things that are coming to us, you know, uh, pretty fast. Um, so we've been focusing, uh, in uh, Generation Park on creating a, a whole trail system, uh, which is, you know, in this uh, west side of Generation Park that we're calling it Generation Park West Loop. Um, you know, this is, you know, what is coming in red. And for you guys to have a dimension of what this is about, this is like 3.8 miles trail, and you will be able to place the whole downtown Houston inside this red ring that you see in here. So what we're talking about here in the Houston area is about like big connections, big area, big spaces. What you see at the back is uh, Green, uh, Green's Bayou. You see Fall Creek there and you see all the other new communities that you know, are being built or were built already and Summerwood and then the communities to the south. And so I want to bring uh, you know, something to, we've been talking about this you know, like now for like some time which is a, it's a concept of the 15 minute city. 15 uh, minute city is a, is a concept that has been used you know, by many cities in the world. Uh, Paris is one, one of the ones that started it. You know, Melbourne in Australia follow it. And so it, each city you know, comes with you know, like the number 15 minutes or 20 minutes could be, that is kind of a mental, uh, mental dimension of time. Uh, in where you will make a decision on getting or not getting on your car to go somewhere. So when you talk about 15 minute city, you are like talking about a place that should be able to serve uh, the whole community uh, that is, with, is within a 15 minute ride by walking, uh, biking or e-bikes. And so that's why we're talking about micro mobility here. Um, and so uh, what is important about this, let me go to the next one, is the, the, the connectivity that you create around this. And as I, as I shared before, I share all the land use map. So here, you know, we're just showing the grid of, of, of what has been built and some open spaces that are like, like clear. But what is important here is to understand that within this grid, we have many different uses. We have hospitals, we have, you know, healthcare areas. We have uh, big supermarkets. We have commercial areas. We have employment, and uh, very important uh, residential use. 
plus all the recreational uses. And so when we, uh, we start measuring this by time, you know, everyone in Houston has like kind of a dimension in, in their mind of like a 30 minute ride, car ride, that it will get you somewhere. Usually you talk about 30 minute ride and you know that you might get downtown like if you're not in rush hour, but you know that from here you will get, you know, within the 30 minute ride. But in, in, when you're talking about trails and, and micro mobility, when you're thinking about getting on a bike or e-bike, you start, you start reducing that amount of time and usually comes to the 15 minutes. So what, I, what we wanted to illustrate here is that by the time you start connecting all the trails that are existing or like future trails in the area, you start creating a network that is, 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 is uh, parallel to the, the, the car uh, system, uh, which is very important for safety and for community building. Community will build around trails. And so we see that in different areas, in our section, you know, trains have been, uh, trails have been built, uh, have been planned, but we need to make an effort on connecting them all so we can create a bigger approach to a trail network that connects the whole uh, Lake Houston community. And so this is, you know, what you see like in red, you know, possibilities of connecting all these communities around. But this 15 minute, you know, clearly is based since we are here at Generation Park and a study that we're doing understanding what is 15, min 15 minutes away from us, but clearly can be used also for Amble uh, downtown. And, and you see how the airport becomes a big part of it and everything that is you know, west of it, but all the way to Atascosita and the lake, and Kingwood and us. So you know, Amble clearly you know, stays you know, at, at the core area of the region. Then when you look at Atascosita and when you look at Kingwood, each community has like their own distance and they will be able to understand what are the services uh, and uh, that they have, you know, close to them. So um, we're going to go through like two uh, major areas that we're trying to analyze. Not trying, we're analyzing right now, <clears throat> and and trying to figure out, you know, what will be the best way to connect uh, these uh, different uh, neighborhoods. You know, we're talking about here what you see in between Atascosita High School. And Summer Creek High School, you see Eagle Springs, the Groves, Balmoral, Lakeshore, Summerwood. All these communities, you know, do want to get connected. Uh, and we are here to the south, you know, providing a good area for employment, entertainment, uh, and, and some other uses. So when you think about kids, you know, that live in Summerwood area and the opportunity and possibility to ride a bike to high school, you can, uh, you can see that there's a potential for those kids, you know, in the Summerwood area to do that today because those uh, trails have been built today and we're like very close to make all that happen. But when you start looking to the, to the north area and you see the Summer Creek High School to the south and you see all these kids, you know, that we have in, in the screen in here, they have the, the possibility to come to school uh, by trail. And the most important thing is that they might be able to come by trail uh, by probably not ever crossing a major road. And so they will be able to get from someone that lives in the groves, you know, will be able to get all the way to Summer Creek High School without crossing ever a major roadway, which is a very important thing. And so it, it's telling us, you know, that, that there's uh, some good opportunity, you know, to create this, uh, this kind of spaces that uh, can create this community connection and can create this micro mobility that is becoming uh, so important these days. And so we have a couple of other examples, you know, like Atascosita High School, how trails can help with that. And then we are focusing on the Fall Creek area, uh, which is to our west area. And we see there's, uh, you know, potential connections to this section. So a kid, you know, from a Fall Creek area can also come to Summer Creek High School without literally crossing any major road on, on, on its way to high school. And so if we start mapping out, and we've done that, but we didn't have like enough time to present everything that we've been doing here, but we, we see that there's a huge potential, you know, to generate a system that is very rich, that will connect the community and will really uh, enrich I, the, uh, the current experience of, of the area. So that's uh, 
that's the presentation. And so if any question, just you can ask. Great, thank you, Gonzalo. Uh, if there are, looks like we have a couple questions. Um, we have one asking about the expansion from Hamblin Road to Woodland Hills. Um, that would be an extension of the existing Hamblin Road, and it probably only makes sense if the Woodland Hills project were to actually go through in the future. I think one of the other questions that came up is what's the timing of Woodland Hills extension to the south? All the projects in the top five uh, priorities, which are really the long-term priorities, those are all projects that re require considerable funding and likely federal funds. And so the timing for those, you know, could be 10 plus years out. Um, but those are the things that we need to be thinking about as a community now, um, if we want to get on the list, for example, HGAC, their 2045 plan and other plans, um, in order to get on those lists, we need to work as a community to prioritize those projects. Uh, I hope I answered those questions. Um, I'd like to ask, Devin, in what way can the business community support the continued expansion of the Houston airport system? That's a great question. Uh, I can tell you that the, the business community can support the, the expansion of uh, Houston airports by, by uh, participating in our, uh, our uh, solicitations, uh, responding um, to our RFQs and RFQs. We need, um, we need competition. We need um, local community uh, vendors and, and uh, service providers to, to bid on our contracts and to, uh, to, like I said, help us with competition. Um, other things are uh, just, you know, understanding that we are doing uh, expansions. We have uh, retail opportunities with expanded concessions. Um, and just know that, that our, uh, our, our, our growth is, 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 still, is still coming back. Like I said, we we're 15% um, down from pre-COVID travel numbers, but uh, they're climbing every day. Uh, we're going to get back to um, a full load of, of traffic. But I think it was uh, late 2023. That's great to hear. Um, Arturo, is there anything that the business community can do to support you and Metro? Well, we, we definitely believe in partnerships and we uh, want to uh, partner with the, uh, the, the, the Lake Houston uh, partnership, uh, partnership Group, uh, allowing us to uh, talk with employees. And we have so many different transportation options that are available to uh, your employees, to the businesses, uh, giving us an opportunity to come out and, and talk to folks, host virtual meetings. Uh, those are really important to us, just emphasizing and educating uh, the public along with uh, employees about the viability of public transportation. Uh, again, whether it be uh, van pools, car pools, uh, transportation, uh, metro lift services, we want to be able to get people around within your community and in and out of your community uh, so that they can access many of your businesses and uh, frequent those. So again, uh, we, you know, let's talk, continue to talk more about what we can do to support one another. Absolutely, thank you, Arturo. Okay, uh, so that concludes our luncheon today. I'd like to recognize our sponsor one more time, which is the Houston Airport System. Thank you again. Today's luncheon would not be possible without your support. We also have, or excuse me, Lake Houston Partnership has several upcoming events. The Partnership Golf Classic in our October 29th. Is that coming up? There it is. The Summer Creek BizCom on November 4th. Networking After Hours at Holy Trinity Episcopal School will be on November 11th. And our next luncheon will be an in-person 
uh, honoring our top small, large, and franchise businesses in the Lake Houston area on November 16th. And finally, our party on the green on December 3rd. So register for these events at lakehouston.org. Thank you all for joining us today and have a great afternoon.